All right, welcome back to Beyond the Podium. Today's topics, Volta Catalunya, Ted Epigacha's complete dominance, Belgian semi-classics, E3, and of course, Gent Wilvigum, and look at this weekend's Tour of Flanders. And of course, joined here by my friend and former foe, TJ Van Garden. TJ, it's great to see you, my friend. You've been now three years already post-retirement and in the car, so you had the first row seat in Volta Catalunya, see Taddy just absolutely destroy, and not just by a little bit, by a lot of bit. I mean, four out of seven stages. I, I know you have plenty to say, so let's just let's just start right there. Yeah, uh, good to see you too, Christian. Um, yeah, I mean, Catalunya. It was. Uh, I mean, he just he just made us all look like children. To be honest, it was um, kind of frustrating. I mean. Obviously, you want to win, like, and he should win. He's the best in the world. Like, okay, I get that. Go ahead and win. Um, like, there 2000, it was kind of, it was a foregone conclusion. Like, you're going to bring the big break back. You're going to win the race there. After that, you know, you got guys 10 minutes down on BC going in the breakaway, and his team was still just keeping him in a minute because he just wanted to win again. And then, uh, again, on page six, it was like, you know, we had guys, there were two guys up the road, both a half and down. And uh, he's just being a minute just because, you know, like he just wants, he just wants to win again. There's a, there's kind of a difference between um, if, the, if, if someone else pulls the break back tactically because they want to win the stage and the win is up for grabs, go ahead and win it. You don't want to gift anyone anything. But you know how it is. Like if if like the group is a half an hour down on GC, it makes no sense tactically for you to pull. You don't have to pull. He he's not making a whole lot of friends in the bunch right now by uh by pulling all these back. And it's gonna pay back. It's gonna it's gonna pay off or it's gonna come back to bite him in the future. I mean, he gets an untimely flat or a crash or a puncture. You think anyone's gonna wait for him? No, as they shouldn't. But at the same time, maybe they, he shouldn't be holding back either. I mean, real quick with you in the car, you know, knowing that you've won stages in the Volta Catalonia, we're like, what, what's? it's not that hard, guy. I mean, how, how are you doing in the car holding your tongue at times when, you know, obviously the, the level is very high. I'm not making light of anything. Uh, but how is it in the car? And I mean, have you are you like one of the typical directors who forgets how hard it is out there and you're asking what's what's wrong? No, I mean, I'm uh, when I look at those guys out there, I looked at my time when I won on Voltaire 2000. It was easily like eight or nine minutes slower than Todd's time. Come on. I'm like, Seriously? when I look at these guys, I'm like, how are you? Like, I would have been Gruppetto. <laughs> I, I was like, how the hell are you guys going this fast, man? <laughs> the speeds are just incredible these days. So I, I look at I look at it more and like, I'm, I'm glad I stopped when I did. Well, okay, we'll, we'll come back to Tade and his dominance and a little bit how you're not so psyched with the way he's going about things. But you did have some some bright spots there with Marine Vandenberg winning the stage. That was huge. First big win for him. So how was that? I mean, was a team, are you, you guys quite confident going to that stage or is that a surprise? I mean, we we had a lot of faith in uh, Marine. Um, I mean, I remember when I was racing Catalunya, not a lot of sprinters go to that race. Um, you know, it's so climbing heavy. Sprinters are just kind of, you know, they're up north or they're doing thing um, in other races. But it really is like a, it's like a gift shop for sprinters. If there's a flat stage, you're not, you don't have a whole lot of competition there. Um, so we decided to bring Ryan. Uh, we saw three potential opportunities for him. Um, he came close on another stage, which was a super exciting stage, but. We're really happy that we banked one with him. That's huge. Well, okay, so going back to what you were saying there, I mean, let's just talk about the time gaps. So second place was 341 back. Last year, ninth place was 332. So, I mean, it's kind of like what you're saying here with your times going up to Voltaire. I mean, it was a nasty race. Let's, you know, first of all, the weather was, was shit. That, I mean, it was just rough. And then, of course, Teddy really racing like, this was the last race he's ever going to be a part of in wanting to go for the juggler at all times. I mean, if you're looking at his, his schedule going forward, 
it might as well be like just all right put everything in the bank go deep every day because i don't have to race now until liege and then after that the giro so if he's going to race as seldom as he is compared to what he did last year then i think he's just going to go for it tj and I, i'm i'm going to play devil's advocate in, in your your argument here and say like look i mean you look at you know last year in liege best only age he, he crashed hard broke his wrist he was out almost until the, the Tour de France, apart from his national championships. So you never know what tomorrow is going to hold. So if you're in that kind of position, I don't know, TJ, knowing you as well as I do, if you had that kind of form where you could just hit the nitrous button at any time, you would be dunking on people. So don't give me this. Don't give me this stuff. You're just, <laughs> you're just mad because you're in the pink car. Look, look, look. They're big dudes, man. I mean, first of all, in – in one week stage races, you're right. Like usually you kind of have to nickel and dime people. Things are won on time bonuses. Things are won by like small margins. It's not until you get to the grand tours that you see those big gaps. Right now we're seeing those huge gaps in these one week stage races because he's just so dominant. And like I said, I have no problem with the winning. Um, if, if I think back to like when Lance gifted uh, Pintani the, the stage of Antu. I'm not saying I give any gifts. I'm not saying soft pedal to the line and let someone else win um, because that's, that's shit for everybody. Like Marco was pissed. Uh, Lance, I'm sure, regrets it to this day. Um, you know, that's just – don't do that. But what you need to do is bluff a little bit. You need to be like, look, we're not interested in pulling this break back. If someone else wants to pull it back, go ahead. Like, it's your stage to lose. But he just said, like, you know what? I want to win everything. I'm going to use my team. I'm going to ride them into the ground and make sure that no breakaway, no group gets anything because I want to win everything. That, that, okay. And I, then I, I, see, I see where you're coming from there. Yeah. So, of course, like, if I, if I, if I see a finish line and I have the form, of course, you know me. Like, it's, it's not that I want... I'm not putting myself in the same category. I'm not even right up here is Tadej Pogacar. Okay, I I won a couple of races in my day, but like if if I could win, I won. Don't get me wrong, but like there is a difference. Yeah, I get that. Um, really quick, what about Sepkus Visma Lisa bike? Obviously, this is his home race. Okay, it is. I was going to say kind of. No, it is his home race. I know there's a lot of hype over, around Sep coming into this race. He didn't perform. But again, if I look at last year's results, he's actually did better than last year. Okay, they, he was riding for his teammate Primoz Roglic, who won the entire race. Um, but I think a lot of people, at least at home in the United States, were, were hoping for a little bit more. But for myself, I'm not concerned about that. But what do you see from your side with the team's performance and Sep? Yeah, it's time for Sep to put his big boy pants on. I mean, <laughs> um, he look, he's an amazing rider, and he's a great kid. I love the guy. Um, but he's been too comfortable working for these big stars. Like, he's working for Jonas. He's been working for Roglic. Um, you know, he won wealth the last year, which was kind of a surprise. But, like, let's be honest, he was kind of playing with house money. He had, uh, he had just the previous Giro and Tour winner on the team. Had he... Had Roglic and Jonas really raced for it and he had gotten third, it still would have been all fine. Like, he didn't have a whole lot of pressure. Now, he's stepped up and Roglic is gone. That's made a little more space for him. Um, now, like, I don't actually remember other times that Sep lined up as the man. This is the first time I can really remember. And now that lining up as the man, I'm like... Can you handle it? You got the keys to the car now. And this is this is a shiny car. This is this my Lisa bike. I mean, they win everything. This is this isn't like a Volkswagen Passat. This is this is a Ferrari <laughs> that you got the keys to now. So um so I don't know. Like it might take him some getting used to. I mean, I, I think he'll be fine in the long run. Um, but maybe maybe he he got a little bit of those nerves. Nah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I mean, at the same time, it's not in his character, first and foremost. You know, that was completely out of the, out of his character. I remember him coming across the finish line and seeing his wife and her pleading to him, you're not going to ever do this to me again. Or he was like, no, I'll never do this shit again. <laughs> I thought that was so set, you know, um, at the end of the, the Volta last year. 
but you know, thinking about maybe even just the way his trajectory is within the calendar year, for example, a lot of people, no matter how hard they train, they just can't really go on all cylinders until May, for example, or July, or, you know, they, they come into, into form later on. I mean, Seth, what he did last year is still insane. I mean, had COVID during the Giro, sat in the bus in a, in the team car by, by himself for weeks and then still saved the race for Primos in the last week. I mean, he's an enigma. Um, so I, I hate to put pressure on him be, just because, again, I, I don't think a lot of times it's in his character. Even I don't think he's – it's not what he signed up for. And I think that, yeah, of course, on a different team he could be that guy. But I don't think he wants to be TJ. I think he's he's psyched just doing what he does, you know, and he, he's just a happy-go-lucky – He's one, like you say, one one of the nicest dudes in the world, and he's just got talent coming out of his pores, and he could do things that no one else could do, and without an ego, you know. And I think that's maybe maybe that's the re- the difference, right? The doesn't have maybe all the killer instincts sometimes. Um, that ego is completely detached. There is none. He's just happy to be out there and racing his bike. So, anyways, what what about going forward with those boys? I mean, they're. It's a little bit different. I mean, it's a lot of it different. You know, we got while missing out some races, doing we're going to go into the classics after this. Um, you know, but without Primos there, it would have been a completely different ball game. That had been an incredible battle, by the way. The two Sylvanians going back head to head with Tade and Primos, but it, it doesn't matter. They they don't have that guy, so it's a different team this year. How, how do you see them evolving into into the classics, and then of course the Tour de France? Well, I mean, they still got the reigning uh, two-time Tour de France champion. So I think uh, the Tour, that's that's clear what they're going to do there. The Classics, I know they got out Van Aert. Um, and they're, I don't know, like, I know that he went the old school sky route with uh, doing a big altitude camp. I don't know about that. I don't think that altitude is something that really helps with the classics. I mean, we'll see. He looked good in E3. Um, yeah. And I'm not going to question Wout because he's, I mean, he's, he's a star. So, um, but I, I just think that like those, those super high, um, super intense efforts that you get at sea level where you can just go like full throttle. You don't, altitude I just see as more of a, that's more of a grand tour game hmm. or or a climber's game. But, I mean, we'll see. Maybe he surprises us all and he wins Flanders. But from what I saw in Gent Wavelgum and E3, uh, you know, definitely Van Poole is looking like a little better there. And I'd like to apologize for TJ's internet connection. He's in a third world country. We'll get a GoFundMe for you, you and Jessica to upgrade your, your Wi-Fi <laughs> package in Mallorca. <laughs> well, um, regardless, we're, we're already into E3 and Gent Wavelgum. We're starting to talk about that. Um, I think even before we go anywhere into Wout and Matthew Vanderpool, which was awesome to watch in E3 on Friday, let's talk about Mateo. I mean, going from winning Paris, having a week off, and then being able to do what he did coming into fifth place, which, you know, I, I don't think even the classification at the end of the day really tell the told the tale of how strong he was in that race as well. So Mateo he's he's for real man and he could be a massive danger man or at least a joker you know whenever all eyes are on his teammate wow he could be one of those guys if he goes up the road good luck trying to get mateo back um so that's that's a big one and then number two though for that squad is the lack of christophe laporte man does it shine a massive light on how big of a deal that guy is when he's not there i mean we kind of take him i think many people take him for granted what he does in the tour de france and lead outs for wow going for the green jersey and then of course in these classics that dude is a stud i mean he is so darn good and what a signing from kofidis over into yumba but he's not going to be there he hasn't been there throughout this whole last week he's got a fever he's not going to be in flanders at all so that's a big hole um going forward nonetheless e3 harblick and was a great race i felt tj at least in my eyes that e 3 crazy enough, felt like a bigger race than Gent Wolfgang, just because you had these two gigantic people there. And and it, I know that you were in a different planet. You were, you're in a bike race in a different country. So you had all focus on this. You probably didn't see as much as I did sitting at home. It's a lot easier for me to, to see both at the same time. But it was, it was awesome. E3 was insane. And that's really the mini Flanders. 
one of the coolest races there. It's like instead of 270 some kilometers, it's only 200 kilometers all smashed in with all the same climbs. It's awesome. Vanderpool was incredible. I mean, he was incredible. Um, Stoyven was very good on little, little track. And then Wout was really kind of the best of rest in third place. And of course, like we said, Mateo in fifth place. So still a very strong ride. Um, but man, Vanderpool was terrifying, TJ. I mean, what he was doing on something and from how far, what he was doing. Oh my goodness. Like you said, those vicious attacks. I mean, who could do that, man? I mean, is he, is he going to be up to the task with Wout or is this going to be all tactics going forward for Flanders? I mean, Flanders, that's a, that's a different, uh, it is a different race. It would be interesting to see how well it was done had it not been for that crash on, I can't remember the, uh, the climb that it was, but you know, Vanderpool was going up the gutter and Wout was, you, you could kind of see like Wout was doing um, his race based completely on, on Vanderpool. Yeah. And Vanderpool was doing his own race. And so the, to me, that that kind of shows that maybe Wout is a little he's a little scared of Vanderpool, whereas Vanderpool, he's just racing free and he doesn't care who's there. Yeah. Um, what do you, OK, let's let's talk more about that. I mean, what are you talking about? The, the right. mental side of that? I and mean, this has been going on since they were kids. Right. They've been going yeah. head to head for a long time and maybe probably the longest rivalry already in the sport. And they still got years to go. So hmm. if you're in the mindset and you're like, oh, man. Matthew's world champion. He's already won Flanders twice. He's won Roubaix. He's won Milan Sarimo. He's like, it's like, what did, what happened to my career? So is, do you think he has a little bit of hesitation and lack of confidence in himself? I think um no, I don't think he has lack of confidence in himself, but sometimes you just come up against somebody who has a number. You know what I mean? Mm. Like Vanderpool, he's just Imagine like, well, Van Aert, he'd be winning anything if it wasn't for Vanderpool, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think Van Aert, he just, he tries to key off of Vanderpool trying to figure out what he's doing. I think, I don't know, I he, maybe he needs to surprise him. Maybe he needs to anticipate further. I know like Vanderpool went from 40 something K, like maybe Van Aert needs to take the race to him and go from 60 K. I don't know, like 60 K breakaways. They've been, they've been going these days. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, styles make fights. And when I looked at E3, that was, that was definitely a, a hell of a battle. Um, what I will say my takeaway from Gen Wavelgum though, was Trek, that team is deep and they can win Flan at the numbers game. I mean, they look like old school quick step. Like they used to just win with numbers, you know, send one guy, the other guy sit and then one guy get caught, the other. When another guy goes, the other guys get to sit. Um, if they go up there with Milan, um, Stoven, and uh, Mods Peterson, like that's going to be a handful. Yeah, I agree with that. And they they played him so well. I mean, there was a long time, especially when Jonathan Milan was going up the road, that Matthew was all by himself on the front, and they just wore him out, wore him out, and then Mads just had the legs, and he easily had the legs. Um, especially the last time up the Kellenberg and then, of course, in the sprint. So I think that we're going to see a lot of the same going into Flanders. You're going to have a stronger team from Visma Lisa Bike. I think that Mateo is going to be even stronger than he was last week in E3. And I think they have to play that kind of tactics because if you just go head to head with the leaders, I, I think that Vanderpool is going to win nine times out of 10. But if you play those kind of cars, you wear them down a little bit, then uh, he's still human. Right. I mean, he's, he can't just do everything. So it's going to be an interesting race. It's not the same. You know, we always sometimes we get a little too ahead of ourselves when the, the semi classics before the big dog races, because it, it's a completely you ever race the, you, you raced, uh, you raced these cobbles a few times, right? Yeah. No, I was actually somehow top 20 in some of these and never I never finished Roubaix. Um, I just sit on the front for George until the first feed zone. Um, that was a, that was a mm. fun day. I mean, really, I talk about cycle tours. I mean, I got to start Roubaix three times and all i knew is just just go to the first feed zone and sit on the front for the first 120k and i was like oh this is awesome start with a couple bars in my pocket i'd fin us and i, I go with george's dad uh, ricardo to the finish line to eat my bocadilla in the velodrome and watch it on the big screen television i mean it, like you could have sold that for a million dollars i mean it, it was so much fun for me no stress um but flounders yeah on the other on the other hand yeah i've done i've done all these races when i was young 
and they're they're fantastic. And we had a little chat going yesterday, and you were saying that you think that, <laughs> and I'm still laughing because for my retort, which I will hold back. But you think that Remco Evenpool should be going to Flanders and that he could win? And which I responded something that you are uh, not of sound mind. Not those exact <laughs> words, but okay. Well, first I'm going to tell a funny story, and then I'm going to get to that. So I, the only real Northern Classic race I raced was Het Newsblad back in 2010. It might have still been Het Volk back then. Um, that was my Neo Pro year. I just had a really good Vuelta Algarve. I was like top five or something. And I remember Andreas Cloden came up to me, and he was like, "Ah, you're a Neo Pro. You're pretty good for Neo Pro. What's your next? Uh, what's your next race?" And I said, "I said Het Volk or Het Newsblad." And he looked at me, and he was like. Uh, I think what you need to do is you need to like get caught up in a crash. You need to like, you know, just maybe just let the air out of your tires and say you had a mistimed puncture, because if you do well in that race, you're going to be racing up North the rest of your career. And you don't want to be doing that. Cody's a genius. Still say that to this day. He's a genius. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if that was the best or the worst advice I've ever gotten, but I did crash out of that race. I made it to like 140K and then rode to the bus, <laughs> but uh, I never raced up north again. But uh, that being said, Remco Evenepoel can absolutely win Flanders. And I think he should win Flanders, um, especially because given the team he's on, Quick Step, um, they would love him if he won Flanders. As much of a fan as I am of him, I don't see him winning the Tour this year, but they, that team seems to be banking everything on a Tour de France win. So I think if you the star rider of Belgium winning Flanders, uh, that, would, that would give you a lot of leeway. That would give a lot of forgiveness for in the Tour if you come up in your third place. I mean, that's a great season. Um, why you think he can Flanders? I have no idea. When you see him, the way he won the world championships, I, imagine him like you have you have Krip, which is still a powerhouse squad. You deliver him into the base of some climb. He gets a thirty meter gap. Nobody can get a draft off of him. He can go. He can do long breakaways. He he knows the area. He's from Belgium. I. For, okay. Absolutely. Can you fly? Okay. This is For, becoming more of a climber's race. Look, Nibali has been top five. Pojakar won last year. Like this, is, It's not out of the realm of possibility that a small little climber kind of guy can win Flanders, especially when it's a strong climber and he's so aero and he can he, he can do that every step. He's won Liège twice. He can do it. Well, okay. I'm glad you brought up Liège. You do real. I know your geography is not great, but Liège still is in Belgium, and I know it's a Belgian team, so winning that is still okay. And so, if you take a guy who's already won a back to back, that's a big deal. I know it's not Flanders and Flanders. You no, know, you know Belgium. You know I, Belgium. It's a big difference. They I love understand. their Flanders. They love Liège Flanders. is cool. They love their Flanders. No, there's no doubt about that. But I, I just have to push back on that. I think that his positioning, he even though I, I don't disagree with you that uh, a hybrid climber roller could definitely is the best rider to do and to go fast and flawless. And Tade is a great example of that last year. However, Remco is not Tade when it comes to position himself. He he's, he's not a Jedi like in, in the Peloton and he's really good when everything's going perfect for him, but he's not so great when things aren't going hundred percent great for him. So fighting back for position, those kind of things. And Honestly, from what I saw in Perry Nice, for him trying to make the difference a couple of times and Matteo easily just sit on his wheel every time. I mean, that's the biggest thing. If he was just absolutely distance himself from everyone every time he hit the gas, then that'd be a different conversation. But anyways, I, I appreciate your hypothetical, TJ. Uh, I, just, I just think you're... We're, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done here. <laughs> you don't have to go on the Quermont. You don't have to go True. on the Tiekenberg. You like a lot of times what happens is like a big fight for the Tiekenberg, big fight for the Quermont, things kind of regroup together and someone hits you from the back on one of these like big paved climbs. He could go there. He gets a gap there. Good luck getting him back. And that, and then that's the point where all the big guys who are looking for those key sections, they kind of look at each other, get a little momentum from behind. He hits them there, gets a 30 meter gap, game over. He could win it. You will. 
Okay, you know what? I bet you. I bet you. All right. Before the end of, before the end of Evan Apool's career, he will win a Flanders. What kind of we we got some uh some big Italian reds on this like usual TJ? Uh, yeah, I think a magnum magnum of Tignanello. I, I knew you were gonna say Tig. Like it's a lot cheaper for you to buy it over there. You have to bring it back though for me. I'll, I'll be waiting All for right. it. I'll be keeping a spot in the cellar. All right, last <laughs> one we're going going forward to. I mean, if we're talking about all these things, obviously he's not going to be there though. That that's so. Let's stop talking about for for this weekend. What's your pick? I mean, if all things, if you have a crystal ball, first of all, how does your team look? EF education going into this this race, and then apart from just taking that hat off, who do you think is has the best shot going to Sunday? Um, well, I think Betiol, he's, so, he's shown some really good form for us uh, on EF. Um, he had a he had a crash, a little injury, but he seems to be uh, coming back healthy. So I think he should be 100% for Flanders. And obviously, he's won it before, so he knows what he's doing there. Um, Nielsen Paulus, unfortunately, has been having this uh, nagging knee kind of pain. So um, he's not really in the best form at the moment, but, uh, so we'll have to see him later on. Um, is he, is he still racing though? Is he still in the sheet? As far as I know, he's not, but, uh, I mean that, that could change. I'm, I'm not sure, but as far as I know, I, he's, he's not going to take the start. Uh, I mean, I'm rooting for Mateo. I'm rooting for Magnus Sheffield outside of EF, but I'm going to go out on a huge, huge limb and say that, uh, Matt Vanderpool is going to win. <laughs> you're crazy yeah we, we have one more american uh, rally sheen will be out there as well I old guess. colorado boy um okay if if you're gonna go for with, with the the layup with vdb i'll go with i'll go with mateo i think that mateo's got a great shot here i think he could play the underdog and, and and go long so if it's a race of attrition which it always is and it keep on putting the and, and i'll go with you Think about what you just said. It's coming into a climber's race. He just won Paris Nice, man, outright, without really having to push that hard on Sunday stage. So, I'm going with Mateo. Okay. I mean, actually, I was uh, I didn't uh, touch on what you just mentioned earlier. Missing Christophe Laporte, I was actually saying that Mateo was going to slot into Christophe Laporte's role. Yeah. Um, I guess it's going to depend on how much freedom he gets at that race. If he's going to be um, if he's going to be, you know, right hand man to Wout, then he might be a little bit closed off. But uh, if he gets a bit of freedom and they can play it tactically, like, yeah, why not? Why not have an American win Flanders? It's been a while. All right. Well, it's been forever, no? I'm with you. And I, I think that it, with Lidl Trek, which is an American team, um, those guys, if they're going up the front, if he could play off that, I think that's going to be really the linchpin in between what's going to go up the road and how good this race is going to be because how strong, like you mentioned in Gim Wolfgang, they were that really turned everything up. So we'll see on Sunday. It's Super Bowl Sunday for me. This is my favorite race of the year. I absolutely love it. Um, this is beyond the podium. TJ, it's great to see you um, pay that internet bill and say hi to Mallorca for me. I can't wait to see you in person soon at the tour. Sorry. I'm going to get like this gigantic fiber optic cable and just like, <laughs> I don't know. I need to do something, but you know, Spain, it's, it's, man. <laughs> all right buddy thank you talk to you soon all right great to see you christian see you bud for all your cycling content year-round subscribe to NBC sports youtube page we got it all